Hello and welcome to my video. Uh, in this video, we are gonna discuss uh, a three-phase source. So here I have a 240 volt, three-phase, three-wire source. Uh, so here we have phase A, phase B, and phase C. Uh, and now connected to that source is a delta load and a Y load. So we have both of those loads. And what we're really gonna look at and talk about in this is we want to calculate what is my main current. What is the main line current going into all of these loads? So here I have two loads. Uh, load one is a delta load. Uh, 40 amps is my line current and it's got a power factor or phase, right, in the phase, power factor of 0.64. Now over here we have 12 amps line current and a power factor of one. So I'm going to kind of go through a little bit of math with these. Uh, the biggest thing when you're doing these calculations is remembering your rules. So here we're dealing with two balanced loads, and this is all we're gonna get into uh, today is just balanced loads. So when I'm dealing with a Y load, okay? Now when I'm dealing with a Y, uh, I wanna remember my, my Y rules, okay? So in Y, V line is equal to V phase times square root of three, right? We also see that V line leads V phase by 30 degrees, right? The last rule that really matters and why, especially for what we're talking about today, is that I line equals I phase. So my phase current and my line current are exactly the same. So in this case, I'm given 12 amps, right? I'm gonna use, I'll use this green for here. All right, I got 12 amps, which that tells me that my line current, I, Y, line A, right? Y load, line A equals 12 amps. Awesome. Now, I wanna look at these rules for a sec. There's something that comes into play here and it matters quite a bit we have to choose a reference, right? In order to reference all of our phasers off of or all of our math off of, the reference that we choose is gonna be V A to B. So that is our reference right there because it is common to both the delta load and the Y load. So I've got here just a little portion of the uh, phaser diagram. We're just gonna look at the phase A. So this would be, you know, zero degrees and 270 degrees down here. So I'm gonna put VA to B right here as my reference, okay? So VA to B is my reference. Of course, that's filthy, All right? So VA to B acts as my reference there. Awesome. Now I need to think for a minute. My Current here, my phase current is in phase with my phase voltage. That's what a power factor is, right? It has to do with the phase current and the phase voltage, right? So my theta for this, right? My phase angle would equal zero degrees. So how that affects here is I need to think about my phase voltage. If my line voltage A to B, right? A to B is here at zero, my phase voltage is actually V A to N is actually at 330 degrees because my line voltage leads my phase voltage by 30 degrees. So if my phase voltage is at 30 degrees, that means that in this case, because I have that power factor of one or phase angle of zero, my uh, line current and my phase current, my phase and my line current are both at 330 degrees. Right, so I'm gonna just put that on here, right here. This would be I, Y, A. Right, and those are both at 330 degrees. So that's kind of the trick there is remembering that um, when I'm putting my currents on here, they're based off of my phase voltage, which is gonna be lagging by 30 degrees. So then I move on to my delta here. 
So now with delta, I have a couple rules that are really important as well. In delta, what we see is that our V line equals our V phase. So our phase current and our line current are the same. So here, you know, A to B, my voltage here is the same as my voltage up there, right? So that's great. We've got VA to B as our reference. We're golden. But what changes here is our current. Well, our line current, our I line, is equal to I phase times the square root of 3. Okay, no problem. Um, what else? Well, the other thing that we see is we see that our line current lags our phase current by 30 degrees. So with these rules, what we're going to do is we're going to take those and we'll apply those, right? So we will have that phase current, right, going from A to B in there. But what we've been provided is our 40 amps, which is our line current. Now, if you didn't have the line current, right, of course, you could apply these rules and get that. But I want to talk about going right from these rules and taking that 40 amps and plotting it. So where this comes in here, we know our, uh, well, we, I'm, I guess I'll tell you our I A to B would equal 23.1 amps, right? with a phase angle of 50 degrees, right? So we got a 50 degree phase angle taken from our power factor of 0.64. With our phase voltage being at zero, that would put this at 310 degrees, right? 310 down, that would be our phase current. Awesome. We're not gonna plot that though, because we're gonna wait. We wanna apply some rules now. Our phase current was 23.1 times root 3 gives us that 40 amps. So our I delta uh, A, our line current, right, of line A of delta is 40 amps. And it is actually going to be at 280 degrees. So we got a 50 degree lag because of our power factor plus a 30 degree lag because our line current lags our phase current by 30, which puts me down here. I'm just gonna make sure you're on the screen, All right? Which puts me down here. Here's my I delta A, obviously not to scale. Now what comes in at the very end is now I wanna calculate that total current, right? So placing those is very important. Uh, getting those, you know, where's my phase voltage, where's my phase current, where's my line based off of that, right? So kind of follow both those processes for those. Now the trick, we want to get IA. So we want to get our total current. So what we need to do is in order to get IA, we're going to do a little bit of math. We're going to go IA equals IYA, right? So our line current for over here, this 12 amps plus I delta A, based off the same reference. So plus this 40 amps here. So we end up putting that into an HV chart. Now um, with HV charts, right? So it's gonna be, uh, what does I say? 12 amps at 330 plus 40 amps at 280. And we'll run the numbers on that. Um, so I got some numbers here, right? I got 10.4 and negative six, uh, seven and negative 39.4. We add all those up. So we end up with 17.4 and negative 45.4 which ends up giving us around 49 amps, right? And when we do the calculation, we get it at around 290 degrees. So that would be our total current flowing there on the main source. And again, I don't have enough room on my phasor diagram here, but that would be wherever that is. I mean, 
ends up way down there, a little bit off screen, and that's okay. That's I, A. Uh, so that's just kind of the process I wanted to walk you through. Of course, my numbers and my phaser diagram aren't perfect. Um, but it's just about those relationships. It's really, really, really about seeing those relationships. Of course, when you're doing phase B, you will base it off of 240 degrees or line B. And when you're doing line C, you'll base it off that 120 degrees. I just wanted to get a little bit of a closer view of our phaser diagram there. Um, so really, I do hope this helped. It's a little bit of a complicated topic, uh, but thank you so much for watching. I'd really appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button. Uh, and check out some of my other videos. Uh, they're here to help. So please keep watching. Thank you so much and have a great day.